Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, we're back. It's the Knitting Posse. I'm Lorian. I'm Kate. I'm Kim. And I'm Laura. And we're excited to be with you today. It is Tuesday, September the 1st. It's September, folks. Wow. It's fall. Oh, it's by fun. the way, it's our year. Day? Oh, really? That's this month. Yes. This month. This, this month. month. This anniversary. month. This it's month. Wow. That's uh, crazy. Who yeah, would have we'll, thought? We have, we have to figure something out for that. We, we haven't yet, but we will be. Um, and, and we're excited to be with you. It's probably been about two weeks since our last, since we last recorded. And we're excited to show you what we've been working on. It's sort of transitional time here. It's still been, we've had some warm days, but it's starting to cool off and fall is like around the corner in Southwestern Connecticut where we live. Um, welcome back. If you've been watching us, welcome. If it's your first time watching our, uh, our videos um, and just a quick reminder to like and subscribe if if we, you know, if you have a good time with us, that's what we're here for. Um, we just finished our posse shawl make along and drew our winners. If you want to see the prizes, they were on our last podcast. What episode are we on? Who knows? 20. 20. 20. Ooh. Right. And um, they were, on our, Insta out. They were yeah. on our Instagram page too. Oh, the prizes. Yes. The prizes. Oh, yes. Pictures, yes. Yeah. So check out um, knitting underscore posse on Instagram. This was an Instagram only uh, contest this time. Uh, and it was good. We learned a few things. And, and thank you, everyone, for really jumping in. I think we got a lot more entries in the last two weeks than we had prior to that. And we all you needed to do was have a cast on. Um, yeah. <laughs> not a lot of rules uh, for this one. And because we it happened very coincidentally. All of us found ourselves knitting a shawl and we said, wait a minute, we should do a make along. So without further ado, our winners and Kim, you have them and each of us, the other three of us are going to show a picture of the winning uh, image from Instagram. Right. So we had over 200 shawls and one was more beautiful than the other. So thanks for joining in. It's so fun. So fun. Yeah. I and wish I you just could want all to mention then. before we, we say that, I know we showed the prizes last week, but we have prizes donated this time. Yes. So they were donated, our, our yarn prizes were donated by Jody of Flower Hill Fleeces. Um, we're still going to come camp out in your um, beautiful fields <laughs> and pitch a tent with your sheep. Um, and we had bags donated from Anya Lulu, but I don't know if she has a, is that what her it's shop the, is? Uh, Urban Stitcher. Urban Stitcher. Called, yeah. Oh, I'm glad you re mentioned that, Lorian. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but our first name we drew was Mama Jess Knits. Um, she goes by Jess, and she knit the campside shawl. So thank you, color. Mama Jess. She yes, a beautiful she, hair. Hair. she said, I like her already because she says she wants to be a quilter, and she's a little bit crazy. So <laughs> she sounds like my kind of gal. So, <laughs> Our second winner is Shelly N. Yarnia, and she knit the peacock shawl, brioche. Um, her name is Shelly, and she said she's a knitter and crocheter, three kids, and she's a flight attendant. So she's probably either home resting up for the next flight or flying already. That's why so she can thanks. do all that brioche, because she has some free time now. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Shelly. Gorgeous. So pretty. And then the final winner is C-A-D-E-L-G-E-N. And she goes by Cindy. Well, her name is Cindy Dell. And she is a knitter, spinner, weaver, quilter, knitwear designer, college professor, and dog lover. And she knit the Festival of Stitches shawl. So yeah, I like those colors. They're great yeah. for fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So congratulations, you guys can uh, DM us on Instagram um, so we know how to get in contact with you and put your prizes out in the mail. So yeah, we congrats. need addresses. Yeah. 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 Thank you yeah, to so. all the participants. There were some beautiful shawls there. Um, really I know. Pretty. I wish everybody could win. Yeah. Yeah. Really pretty. Yeah. yeah. All right. Moving right along to what we're wearing and, uh, Two of us uh, are wearing knitwear and two of us are not. So we're going to start with Kate. 
Um, I am wearing my circlet shrug. It is all seamed. And, wow, stunning. Um, I ended up just steam blocking it. I didn't wet block it um, for no particular reason. Then I just thought I would try the steam blocking because that's what we had talked about last time on the podcast. And um, the stitches actually and the lace were really already like pretty open. So it didn't really need to be defined more or opened more. Um, and I love it. Um, it's hey, a it's long. a piece of art. It is. Yeah, I like. really, I'm actually, I'm, I'm in kind of a knitting funk now because I really didn't want it to be over. I really am still missing knitting it. So um, I, I do I'm think you should one. ask, I think you should ask Paolo if she wants you to knit a sample <laughs> for the store. I will. I would be happy. I would be honored to. <laughs> right. So then you can knit it again and I would love a different to. color. Yeah. Yeah. So Paula, if you're watching and you would like a sample, because it is knit in the Mayak, um, it's Tibetan cloud, and the colorway is wild daisy. And it's very soft, like, I, you know, I'm wearing a sleeveless dress. It's really soft uh, on the skin. And the stitch definition, again, it's just, it's gorgeous. The pattern was very well written. Uh, the construction was um, interesting. And I love it. I think I'll wear it a lot. It's and it's by Nora Gone. Nora Gone. Yes, that's the pattern. Yep. Yep. Thanks. Great. Um, and Laura? Yeah, so I'm wearing um, a sweater that I made last summer. It's called the Donner, D-O-N-N-E-R, um, in Quince and Co. Sparrow. It's um, Elizabeth Doherty, D yeah, uh, she's Blue Bee Studio. And um, she's a top-down designer and she does a lot of cool construction. This is, it's hard to tell, um, it's a lateral braid and it just gives it some structure. And it's just, you can see I have a white tank top on underneath it, but um, it's just a great piece. It's one of my favorites. So I just threw that on today. So I love it. Cute, I forgot about that one. Yeah, I do too. Do you remember the yarn it's knit in? Uh, Quince and Coast Quince, Sparrow. Right. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And on. It's that just, I'm sorry, just FYI, she, there's a lot of people, so obviously this is a summer weight linen. A lot of people have knit this in a woolier, because um, Sparrow's a fingering, um, in a woolier, and it's really fun to go through the projects, because of course that makes it a very different kind of sweater. But anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Super. All right. So we're going to move on to um, finished objects. Mm -hmm. So Kate, what do you have? Um, aside from my circlet shrug, I have finished, hold on, ta -da! Hey. <laughs> Those are so cute. The um, so cute. covers, I, met, I was knitting for Rich. Um, they're really quick. It was um, a pattern called Hand Knit Golf Club Covers by Marnie Reeser. Um, it was loosely based on that pattern because I actually did mine uh, Magic Loop. I believe the pattern is written flat. Um, so Rich took them out and was walking along for the first time and one popped right off. So when he got home, I actually had to add some elastic in here um, and I put some right here just to hold it on. Cause he wanted like huge pom poms on it. He wanted them to be very retro looking. So that is what I did there. And just a couple of notes. I added um, elastic on also on the driver because that one would pop off. The putter didn't need it cause uh, I used less stitches on that. And for the jobless stripes, I used the method where you, knit one row of the next color. And then the first stitch of the second row, you slip it purlwise. And then you don't get a jog where, the, where you're changing the colors and the stripes. Nice. And then one more tip I had was when you're doing the ribbing on the, um, when you're doing the ribbing with the stripes, see those little like weird, uh, pearl bumps there, they bother me. So this was the first one that I did. And somewhere in the recesses of my mind, I remembered learning that if you are doing ribbing 
and changing colors and you don't want that little weird pearl bump in your stripes, you knit every stitch of the color, the first row of the new color. So when you change color, you knit every stitch. And you can't tell that they're all knitted. It still looks like it's ribbing, but I thought that was a really cool thing I remembered. I don't know where I learned it, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's what I did for the other two. So they don't have that weird little pearl bump that bothers me where the color changes are. So Rich is thrilled with them. They were a quick knit. I mean, I think it took like one night to knit each one of them. And I used the uh, Clover pom-pom maker, the large one to do the pom-poms. And that's it. It's a, a, a loops and thread acrylic. Uh, I think it's an Aran weight, 100% acrylic wool, impeccable solids it's called. So that's my other FO. <laughs> Those are cute. They came out really nice. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. So. Hey. Um, do you have any finished? No project? FOs this time, but very close. Okay. <laughs> Laura, anything to show? All right. Well, mine is very close, but maybe closer than Kim. So I'm actually going to show it. Um, I knit, it's going to be a little difficult to show it, but I knit the spring thing shawl. Um, it smells so good because I blocked. So you knit the, the main body. Mine is um, Fuzz Family Twisted Sister Fingering in the colors called Butterfly Kisses. How could you resist, right? Um, and it's a little awkward to show because right now it has a contrasting edge. And um, yeah, I'm going to show that. Um, I'm just finishing that up and I love it. I did a sort of a bright yellow and I might not do the little fringy fringe things. Not sure about that. So, um, but I lit I just have to finish binding this off, which I will do tonight and it will be a finished object. And I love it. I love the yarn. I love the size. Um, that's designed by uh, Lisa from Espace Tricot and all their patterns are free, which just still amazes me because they're very talented designers and I love their stuff and they give all their patterns away or pretty much all of them. I think occasionally they've done one as a fundraiser and, but most of their patterns they're offering for free and it's very mm -hmm. generous of them. Yeah, I agree. It is. And they're so popular. So, yeah. you know. Well, and I but. personally just love both of their styles so much. Me too. Very, Me too. Yeah, I know. I miss their mean, podcast. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. I was. Yeah. Well, they're usually gone a lot in the summer. True. You know, those, it's that European mentality where they take the whole summer off. Lucky them. Yeah. Right. Um, so they've been they've been out and about, but hopefully they'll get back soon. Laura, when did you get the fuzz fiber yarn? Did you order it? Actually, I think I mentioned it. I ordered it when I saw um, Sophia from the Knitter League, Knitters League doing, she did a beautiful, um, one of those Pam Allen cardigans from that um, Quince & Co book that she did. Uh, okay. But um, Sophia did it in um, uh, Fuzz Family and she was just absolutely ooing and eyeing over it. And so I went on there and I had been thinking that I wanted to do, I just wanted to get a one skein fingering. The nice thing about the, this one was, I, I had a whole debacle. I, I cast on once and I had, been, I had a way too big needle size. Then I went the other direction with a too small needle. So I actually um, knitted it a little bit longer uh, by the directions. And because that skein had almost 500 instead of 400, wow. oh. I was able to get away with it. So. Oh, nice. It's a yeah. really beautiful yarn. It has some silk in it and it's just soft and it'll yummy. be nice around your neck. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. I remember we saw them at um, Vogue Knitting last year. Yeah. Uh, after the Knitters League had raved about them from the year before. Did um, you buy some of their yarn? I didn't. No, because I didn't have a project in mind at the time for yeah. it. Um, I would definitely um, buy more from them. It's really, it's beautiful yarn. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Good. I have a finished object. Oh. Here is my, uh, and I did a little extra on the oh, sleeves. Like yeah, it's very cute. This is my um, 
pink velvet sweater. I am super pleased with how it came out. I used, I think I showed this last time, but I used Stress Knits Yarns Favorite Base in Rust Belt. This is my absolute favorite color right now. It is so complicated, has so many layers of different colors. I absolutely love it. Um, and I used this yarn, which I won in an Instagram giveaway from Yarn Habits, which um, she was also very recently had on sale. So I grabbed some more because I love this. Now, I know I say it all the time, not a fan of mohair, definitely a fan of Surrey. <laughs> this is a Surrey, Surrey Silk Cloud. Um, it's 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 28% silk. I love this so much. Um, I held two strands together and uh, it's, it's finished. I have a, the little hole. I'm going to block it. Uh, it. It fits snugly, but I'm going to block it. Uh, I knit this whole yoke on a car, on some long, on a very long car ride. And, um, and I lengthen the sleeves. I lengthen the body. It's a crop sweater. I lengthen the sleeves um, to be full length because they're three quarter in the pattern. And I pretty much did everything else according to Andrea Mowry, who's one of my go-to sweater designers. And I just, to be honest, I wasn't sure, I was totally crazy about this rust color when Stacy has shown it. Yeah, I totally love it. It's a fingering weight sweater. And Stacy had this obsession kind of thing with Andrea Mowry. She did a year of Andrea and knit, I think, a different pattern every month. And when I was debating what I was going to do with this yarn, I was looking at two different patterns and it sort of pushed me over the edge. Like I have to use dress knits with an Andrea Mowry pattern. So um, I really, really love it. I, I don't think I need another sweater in it, but I would, I would, I don't know. I like it. Um, it's one of my Rhinebeck sweaters. So Rhinebeck, Hmm. Nice. Thank you. Rhinebeck isn't happening for real this year, but I'm still knitting Rhinebeck for Rhinebeck. And I have two sweaters because Rhinebeck's weather is always unpredictable. Yeah. In fact, last year, I think I wore a sweater and a shawl and something else. You did. You look like Heidi. You had so many layers on. <laughs> I had a lot of layers going. Uh, and I actually finished my tassels in the car on the way up. But You did. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm, I always say, don't let me knit more fingering weight sweaters, but it's what I kind of find myself doing mm -hmm. right now. It's beautiful. Thank you. So I'm pleased with it. And um, I don't know what, I have yarn for both left over. I will probably use this rust in something else to be determined. And you said that um, the Surrey is a lace weight and you held it double? I think it's a lace weight because 100 grams is 600 and... Oh, like almost 60 yards. Mm -hmm. It comes in 50 gram stains. Yep. And Iris, whose yarn habits, uh, yeah, she she sells it in 50 gram skeins. Yeah, but it has a nice halo. So it's not yeah, so, it's, it's thin and light. I don't know. It's not like I need an entire stash of it, but I was happy to give Iris a little more it's love. Beautiful. Yeah, and that's kind of what's lucky. You won it by chance, and then I was sort of converted in using it. So. <laughs> Lorian, can I ask you a quick question? Um, would you use that Surrey like held together with another yarn? Do you think it would give the same kind of halo, or is it too much? Like instead of just a straight up mohair, would you strand it with a fingering? So many sweaters right now that I see are like a fingering stranded with a like silk cloud or you know yeah. some of the standard. Would you do that or do you think it's too fuzzy? Um, I think you could, I would do, I would do that. I don't, I don't love, I don't know. It's not my favorite thing to do in a sweater. Um, yeah. I did it okay. in a shawl and I'm trying to remember. I feel like I, oh, I did it in my weekender. Um, hmm. Your so weekender sweater her. you did? Oh. Yeah, I did it with mohair um, hmm. in my weekender. And it's, it's really soft. Like it, ma it makes a very luxurious feeling um, pro product. Uh, I just, I don't think this would be too fuzzy. I don't think it's that different because it's a lace weight. I've also knit my ranunculus with a DK weight surrey, yeah. a thicker surrey. But not held with something. Yeah, it's just, 
whatever. It's preference. Okay. I'm I'm not, I don't, there's something yeah. about mohair that I just, I don't care for, but, um, but I do like Surrey and I feel like it has its place. I don't personally want a lot of sweaters that have, that have that, you know, yeah. Okay. This just design, curious. like this pattern is specifically designed for a fuzzy texture. It yeah. almost gives it a texture in addition to the patterning of the color work. So yeah. it's beautiful. Thank you. I highly, highly recommend the, um, the pattern. Great. Yep. Cool. All right. Whips. So back to Kate. Um, I have two whips. One is my Venezia shawl, which I haven't knit a stitch on. <laughs> so I'm not even going to show it to you. Um, Posse make long loser. Didn't finish in time. <laughs> <laughs> but again, that's why we had the rule. You don't have to finish it. So I will eventually finish it, but it's not done now. Um, my other whip is Rich's sweater. So I let him look at the file that I have on my Ravelry um, page in favorites um, called Sweater Ideas for Rich. Uh, <laughs> a lot of them were um, told, uh, were um, recommended by viewers. And so he picked out the pattern that he wanted. And he chose the zip neck saddle shoulder sweater for men. Um, it's by the Flattens. And I've never done a zip neck before, so that will be interesting. I am using the Harrisville. Oh, gorgeous. Beads. This is in the VCR colorway, so it has some green in it. I think you can see it there. Mm -hmm. And it is knit, the, the pattern is in pieces, and I started to do it in pieces. So I knit one, the front ribbing, and then I was like, why am I doing this in pieces? <laughs> So I knit the back ribbing and then I seamed them together um, because I had become an expert seamer after seaming the circlet shrug. <laughs> and now I'm just knitting in the round uh, for a long way. Um, so I knit most of this uh, on the way to and from Boston to deliver my boys back to school. They are gone. And so hopefully I'll finish this soon and then I can start working on something else. So Kate, do you have a photo of the um, project? I do. And, um, and now Rich, Rich has a Rhinebeck there. sweater now, huh? Rich, Rich is going to have the Rhinebeck Rich is ready for Rhinebeck. I don't know that I'll get another one done before then. Um, it's actually, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, I don't love the cover photo, but right. he, so that's it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love the sleeves too. Which Jay would wear something like that. Yeah, yeah. How are you going to sew the zipper? And that really freaks me out. I don't know if anyone out there has done a zip neck sweater. Let me know. I if might, you know a good I, tutorial. I, How oh, you have, but have you, you ever sewn one? one in, Lorian? No, I brought it to a. That's what I thought. I knew. I thought you. I remembered you saying you had done. Yeah, it. but that's not a bad idea to have it done professionally. Yeah. I would do that. I, I would. I have a full. I bet zip. Dinah could hook you up or yep. Mantheos, something. All right, I'll, I'll have to get Dine on the hot yeah, phone. I'm the line. <laughs> Kim She's going to regret. you able to do this for me, Dinah. Sorry, Dinah. <laughs> just a local tailor, to be honest. I just yeah, probably. They, yeah. They have zippers. They know what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to mess up my work to do, to start, suddenly learn to sew a zipper. I don't think it's that hard. I've also had, a, I, um, I knit a backpack and uh, it needed to be lined or it had instructions for lining. Uh, and I had that brought, okay. I brought that to a seamstress also. Okay. All right. So, some good That's ideas. Smart. If anybody else out there has an idea of how you put the zipper in, let me know or. In I'm, other words, Kate or, wants an address to mail yeah. it to. <laughs> I'll mail it to you. And you <laughs> You're welcome, Dinah. Now there you go. <laughs> Okay. All right, Kim, it's your turn. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, I had two whips and um, mine is the spring thing. I did not get very far. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Um, well, you, you got sidetracked with the next I got one. sidetracked big time and I'm so happy I did. My other whip is the Aldo Aldes 
Aldous. 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 Is that that one? Aldous. <laughs> Aldous by Isabel Kramer. And I love this sweater. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm on my tats on my two at a time. So it's going to be kind of hard to show. But let's see. Well, here's your, the back. Your Instagram post was perfect because you could really see how tweedy and gorgeous that yarn is. Oh, yes. Laura, this sweater is amazing. Um, I, again, the little details, the uh, shoulder that she puts into this sweater is beautiful and it kind of shapes your shoulder. I also love the lateral braid, the little finishing touch at the bottom by the by the hem. I don't know if you can see yep. that. Yep. I'm a sucker for a split hem. <laughs> Sign me up any day for that. And um, hers, and, hers kind of crosses over a little yes, bit. Like a lot yeah, of it, it, right. It I has had that to, little, so I had to pick up stitches on the finished part. So it does overlap yeah. a little bit here. It's hard yeah. to say. Yeah. But it was a, another cool little finishing touch. Yeah. Um, it's such a simple sweater, but the details are just thank you. perfection. Yeah. Yeah. It has a hem down, you know, a fake <laughs> seam down the armpit. I didn't do that. that. No one, no one, who's going to say, him, you know, well, and it was just, <laughs> hey, <you> guys, <laughs> do you like my hem? <laughs> I have the fake seam going down the back and it's kind of, it's interesting. It's very similar to the, it's the opposite of the weekender. But so I'm knitting that in the fiber company, Erin Moore Light and oh, beautiful. it's just, awesome i'm i feel like lorianne i am just rocking through this sweater and but i've got to say i hate sleeves i hate them i hate them i hate them <laughs> i wish i could send that out to dinah and have it done because i can knit body all day long but now i'm like i have to force myself to sit down yeah. i know you're thinking like it's gonna take you like a couple days <laughs> i know i just have to buckle buckle down and do it so remember really how much you want to wear that sweater soon Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And I cannot start another project until I do this. So it's good. <laughs> That's <laughs> myself. Your, that'll force you to get it done. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So those are my two FOs. Whip nope. it. <laughs> to be. To be. Whips to. Right. Yeah. All right, Laura, you're up. Okay. So I have two sweaters that aren't exactly whips, but I've swatched for them. So I'm, I'm, I'm counting them. So um, I really love the City Lights um, sweater by uh, Tannis Lavallee, and um, she did hers in a fade, and I, even though I really, really liked her fade, I'm not really mm -hmm. a fade person, and most of them, when I scroll through the projects, I think, oh, that's beautiful, but it's not for me, and I really wanted to make it, um, it's, you can either do a fingering with a mohair or in a worsted or DK can't remember what this is. Um, so I'm copying Lorianne, who knit hers in a beautiful white tweed. It's mm. um, it's Alana Grossa. It's called Only Tweed. And I did this beautiful, it's kind of a black, a bluish blackish charcoal with all these flecks of color. And it's wool and silk and polyacrylic and viscose but mostly wool and silk it's like more than 80 percent of wool and silk mm -hmm. and it's soft and squishy it's on sale at webs it's mm -hmm. only i think it was seven dollars a skein i think i used six or seven skeins so it was less than fifty dollars <gasps> for a sweater and i swatched and I can't wait to start that. This is my next, like I'm casting on as soon as I cast off the edging of my um, spring thing. And then the other one that I can't wait to make is um, the um, Scofidio. It's that, um, it's a Brooklyn tweed sweater. I don't have a picture of it, uh, designed by Fiona Alice. And the original pattern was shown in a Peary yarn and it's like a main color and then two or three colors in the yoke. And I really didn't like it. And then somebody did one in Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which I absolutely love. Loft is like one of those yarns that it feels really crunchy and then you sock it, sock, soak it and block it, not sock it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm really excited to start this. Um, Laura, can you hold and, it still up at the camera? The, oh, the, the white. I yeah. just want to see the texture. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
it's just beautiful. And then um, the, and you can look at this on um, Ravelry. Um, the woman who did it in Loft instead of Peary just did one color in the yoke and this is homemade jam. And Ooh. I'm really excited, but also kind of scared because I love this sweater and it's in pieces, bottom up, it's big girl knitting. And <laughs> it's always so terrifying because you don't know until the very end whether you're gonna love the way it fits. And, um, but I love this sweater and I, so I'm gonna do my city limits first, which should fly off the needles. And that's kind of what I need right now, just like a really quick top down. This is also another sweater that just has beautiful details. It's a very simple, it's kind of like a sweatshirty sweater. Like it's a, um, but it has just beautiful, simple details. And I love this yarn and I just, I can't wait. That's gonna fly. And then I'm gonna focus on this and get serious again. But I'm excited for both of them. Laura, I can totally relate to what you're saying about not loving the sweater all the time. I think I wrote that on my last Instagram page. It's like knitting this Eldos. I'm like, I know, I love this already. Yeah. And I did try it on. I'm like, oh my God, it was like, it was like it was made for me. And it yeah. was. But, <laughs> yeah. but sometimes you finish a sweater and you're just like, meh. And that's well, so and upsetting. It is. And it's torture when you do bottom up in pieces because you yeah. really don't know until you've sewn it together. Right. And, you know, it's not like a top down where you can try on and, you know, you can, and I swatched and, you know, I should know how this is going to turn out, but it, it, it's just, it's hard. And I know, it is. you know, you see a lot of top down sweaters and I know, I feel like sort of serious people who understand construction and design say it has to be seamed the seams give it structure and blah 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 and I'm like yeah but it's torture when you <laughs> put all that knitting in and then you try it on and you're like oh or like uh -huh. these are too long and you've got to take them all out and re-knit them I mean it's just instead of just being able to, yeah and you know I struggle with that because I want to knit those sweaters um you know I want to sort of it's not right or wrong but you know I want to appreciate that but um but it's really upsetting if you get to the end and you don't like it mm -hmm. you don't like the way it fits and mm -hmm. yeah because we all know swatches lie mine lie to me all the time no matter how much I try and some of us just skip that part mm. <laughs> yep. okay you're set all mm -hmm. right and my whip is my other Rhinebeck sweater, which is a short sleeve sweater because Rhinebeck, as I said, the weather's often unpredictable. And- Wait, can I, I ask, have... is the weather unpredictable if it doesn't actually happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Even more- So you're prepared for this non-event, whether it's hot or cold. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> and this it. is the end of my rust period. So this- yeah. Oh, yummy. This is my Miss Arena tea. I think it's a tea. Uh, it's by Caitlin Hunter. And I'm going to say this was a good challenge, this sweater, so far. I mean, nothing left is challenging. So the challenging part is over. So there's lace at the top. There's two color color work. And in between that, there's a row of cables. Oh, so, oh my God. That's a big girl yeah. sweater. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I predict this would have been one of the sweaters of Rhinebeck. Like we would have seen a lot of this because this, the Andrea Mowry Spark cardigan, those are probably two that we would have, we would have seen a lot of, including mine. So, um, I've never knit a garment. I don't think, I don't remember knitting a garment that had linen in it. So the mm -hmm. yarns are this yarn, I don't know, or again, wanted rust. And it was designed in cozy, posy merino linen. And you couldn't get it. She was sold out like days after this came out. And I found, I'd, I'd been following Amanda Hope yarns. Can you see that? And she has the same base, more or less, merino linen. I think it's a 90. Yeah. 90% merino wool and 10% linen. She has some very interesting yarns though. She has some very soft, uh, high micron count yarns. Mm. Uh, and I was on her website looking and I saw the colors and really needed rust. So I 
said, Do you, are you going to be dying any rest? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, I'll wait. So I waited a day or two. And then the cream color yarn is my gift skein from Jody of Flower Hill Fleeces. And this is her Egyptian fingering. Now, the yarns are not, they're both a fingering weight. The, this one is a little bit thinner, and I think it's because it has silk. It feels different. I only used a small amount for the color work. It's alpaca silk and linen blend. So the, the fiber content is a little different. It's also applied. This one is a single. And it, it has more of a tweedy look with where the linen versus the merino is. Um, so it's been a good challenge to hear. I had to take, I had to step away from my pink velvet because I had, I could not get through the sleeves without finishing this yoke. <laughs> um, and it was very challenging. I, it depends how you knit your color work. I use two hands. My, I'm a continental knitter. My left hand is where my dominant color goes and my right hand is where my not dominant color goes. But yeah, I was, so I had the light color in my dominant hand, but I needed to cable with my not so good oh, hand. Oh boy. So wow. It was a little, it was a little bit of a mental, put it in your body type, like thing. I fit, I did find my rhythm with it eventually. Um, and there's a pattern on the, on the torso. There are actually two options. I'm not doing either one. I'm just going to go straight. I don't care about the text. One of them is a very open work. I don't know, mesh almost. And the other is a texture that I can barely see. So I'd rather just sort of get through it. Um, same thing, these sleeves are supposed to be rather wide. So I'm hoping I can keep them that way. And I think it'll make a nice fall sweater. So, and I think it's gonna open up quite a bit. The lace has to open up when you block it. So I think it's, it's been kind of fun. Yeah. Brian, um, on the yoke, are there long uh, strands when you doing the stranded knitting? And did you catch the strands or not? Yeah, so that was the other thing. I caught my strands in the cables. Oh my oh. gosh, forget okay. it. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. For your sleep? Wow, I will not be making that sweater. <laughs> there was one part where I, 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 and I also cable, I cable without a needle. That would just be too much, throwing a third needle in there. So that's my floats. Oh, okay. sometimes I think the inside is just as pretty. Yeah, you know, those are just my ends, but they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Not, nothing too yeah. crazy. It's just no. that you definitely. I have one cable where I dropped the cable, and so I stopped. I just left the floats long there, but okay um, for six rows or something. But yes, you have to cat. I did. I think you have to. I, I don't know. my rules like five stitches is pretty mm -hmm. much the max. Yeah. Yes. And then after that, I like to catch um, the floats. So, right. Right. Um, it's interesting knitting these two similarly. You know, if I had more brain power, I might have adjusted, like made this neckline a little wider. I like the neckline is wider in the pink velvet, but it's also fun. It's fun to knit. These two designers are, they have a lot of similarities in their designing, I think. I knit, I knit quite a bit of their patterns, sweater patterns. So, um, so I thought this was neat. I have not knit, no, this was part of a four design. This was her Nidalee, inspired by Italy. Uh, and I knit the Tanya. I did not knit the other two. Don't ask me what they are, but they're out there. Um, so it's fun. And I, I'm getting, I'm, it's been interesting to knit with the linen in a garment and the different content of these two yarns. They feel very different when you knit, when you're in the hand. So Good. moving on. Yeah. Uh, so acquisitions. Kate, what you got? Um, I have a skein to match my um, gift skein from Jody from Flower Hill Fleeces. I bought an additional skein of the Egyptian fingering and I am planning to knit a Scarborough shrug with it. And I pulled up the picture. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. So that's, um, that's in the works. <laughs> I think you're going to really I, like I that color. I meant this is the same base. 
and I meant to share, look how awful this ball yeah. is. Well, let me explain why. I, and I think it's because of the, the fiber content, the, the linen and the silk. Yeah. I have a very basic ball winder and Swift. I don't even know that my Swift has a brand and I've, it's opened the, the, the strings that hold the lines together, the crisscrosses have broken and I just threaded in other scrap yarn. I have a Stanwood ball winder, which takes a lot of abuse, but this, ball, this yarn kept like launching <laughs> off the ball winder, did it three times. Oh my God. Um, and I think it's just cause it's a little bit slippery from the fiber content. So I went slowly, I went more quickly. Eventually I went by hand. All right, that's good to know when I have to wind these up. Maybe I'll have to stand there with my hand on the top of it, like <laughs> wind with one hand, put your hand on the top with the other. <laughs> Let me know how that goes. All right. <laughs> um, Kim, do you have anything new? I do, I do. Um, I think this will be my cold weather Rhinebeck sweater. Um, it's the Terrazzo sweater by Petite Knits. <gasps> oh, I love that. I'm a sucker for this. This is ridiculous. I've got my stash up. 2020 is really working. <laughs> I, <laughs> I did buy the Noro, uh, which one is Silk Garden Sock Solo in the color that she makes it. Um, it as you can see, it's kind of funky. It's kind of got a lot of, but I kind of like that about Noro. This will be my color work. Um, my concern is this is very white. This has a lot of yellow in it. And they're both from the same lot. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's a big difference. But it might be solved because it is with mohair. So I can soften up that color with the mohair. So I got the Noro at Knits and Pieces. It was hard to find um, in, in that color, color it was. In this color, yeah, in this country. So yeah. um, that was on Knits and Pieces. And they're in... Maryland I want to say I just happened to be searching I was on a mission um, it's going to be interesting to see and then yesterday my son had a doctor appointment in New Haven I was like yes and <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I said I took him to the appointment and we stopped at New Haven and I, I found son that. right around wow. <laughs> what, what Kate <laughs> I know. That John was thrilled. Oh my God, poor John. I'm like, um, you didn't make him go into the store, did you? Totally did. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, and he's it's such a little, so funny. It's so little and quaint. It's that's so cute. Quaint. So he walked in and he just, I'm like, just here's the car key. Go wait. Don't bother me. Yeah. So <laughs> he's funny. He just, he just thinks this whole podcast thing is a riot, and you know. So he's like, you knitters are crazy. So anyway, that's what I buy. I bought skeins of this and I'm going to make this terrazzo sweater and um, hopefully it goes in the pile of sweaters that I love. <laughs> I, I love that sweater. I've spent a lot of time looking at the Noro colors for that. I love that uh, sweater. And even the plain colored ones are beautiful. Um, yeah. I now follow the hashtag and I'm like, oh, I like that one too. Oh, I love that one too. So really pretty. Yeah, your mohair yeah. may even out the colors, and you may I'm hoping find so. yeah. with your Noro skein also that um, there's a lot of variety throughout the. Well, I see even on hers, there's some pooling in that. So I think it's just that gonna gonna be that kind of sweater. So right. here, do you think I should alternate skeins or just let it happen? I think if you if you aren't gonna like it, you should alternate skeins. If you think but I also, like Kim, I think you're going to, that if they're the same color, same dye lot, you're just seeing the yellow in that one. There's going to be yellow in the other one. Yeah. It's probably just inside there. Yeah. 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 Probably. And I yeah. think your mohair is going to even a lot of it out. Right? It's stranded yeah. mohair. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you need to alternate, with, especially with the mohair. Yeah. 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 That'd I, be interesting. I, I can't wait to see that. Yeah. We'll I, see. I might have we'll to follow see. you on that one because I've always loved that one and that would be awesome. We could twin again. <laughs> I probably won't be able to find your color, but I'll find something. And yeah, it's well, like you, it's out of my color. It's like out of my wheelhouse, mm -hmm. but I keep being drawn to it. Like, oh my God, that's so fun. Um, she, she does a uh, different color mohair on hers. Hers is called like ballet tights and it's a, a brownish pinkish. Um, I couldn't find that and I could not find that mohair in this country at all. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was like this, I just, 
you know, it looks like it's going to soften it up and look pretty oh, together. That's so, be fantastic. Yeah. And I didn't want to pull out the blues. I didn't want to pull out any of the colors. I just wanted to mm -hmm. soften, soften that up a lot. Yeah. So. yeah. That's going to be beautiful. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Laura, do, you have, do you have anything? Zippo. Zippo. Okay. Um, I have something, but it's not going to be for me. So I know you guys, I know I talk about Carolyn of Playful Day. Oh, um, I love her yarn. And uh, she sent me some yarn when my dog ate my yarn. No joke. And I, she just replaced it all on her own. And I've been saying, I want to knit something for you as a gift then. You send me the yarn, you pick your colors, you, pick, you know, let's pick out a pattern. We've been doing this for a year, okay? Because <laughs> it was a year ago that my dog ate my yarn. She picked these. <gasps> oh. Oh, oh those are awesome. Uh, Wait, for what pattern? 20. So I'm going to knit a Codicus, Codicus shawl, which is by Caitlin Hunter. Uh, I've knit one. I might have knit it twice already. I'm not sure. And gifted one. I have one for myself. I have the pattern. So this is, this is all DK. Um, and she's taking pre-orders like right now. She may close them by the time we get this up. Uh, colors are pretty good. So this one is called Tiger. This one is Viola. This is Forest. And this is Milk and Honey. And so she are, even told me where so to beautiful. put each color. She told me where to put each color in the pattern, what to pair up. Like these two are not going next to each other. Right? Yeah, yeah, of course not. But um, I'm really excited to knit this for her. Her DK is, it's all uh, merino. It's, it's a pretty good, it's very bouncy. It's a really thick, nice merino. It's 240, oh, 246 yards for a hundred grams. Oh, hold on. This is, yeah, you know, that's Ooh, pretty. Do they all say this? No. This, hmm. these two say they're worsted spun. These say a, li a little bit different, but they're all her Merino DK. It's going to be gorgeous. That is a mosaic knit shawl. That's uh, going to be I hard just, to give back. You know, <laughs> I have one. I have, I'm going to give her all of the leftovers back because um, it's hers. And I'm just, I'm excited that we came. I know Tarlin worked really hard in choosing her colors. She only knit socks. So I'm super, very excited to be able to do this for her. I, um, I'm not really ready to knit DK yet. It's got to cool off a little bit more. We're getting um, there. Yeah, it's going to be around the corner. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to finish my sweater first, my sweaters. I am going to do, um, I'm going to submit a video to Christy Glass, who's doing a Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck sweater. I'm going to wear both. I'm going to do it really quickly. I'm going to film horizontal landscape. Uh, and if, if you're knitting a Rhinebeck sweater, you know, look her up. Tell her, tell her about your Rhinebeck sweater. I've never done it. I probably would never do it in person, but I think it'll be fun. Um, I have some, oh, oh, and then isn't she sweet? Tarolyn sent me a mini. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Cute. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's a regular color. I think it was like a one of a kind, part of her one of a kind. So, um, and then the other thing that's going on is Hohe does a fall cow and it's very large. Kate, you were saying you did it last year. Mm -hmm. And I, signed up to knit four shawls in two months. Who knows what I'll do. Um, but the You'll patterns knit four I shawls in two months. Yeah. <laughs> one's a one skeiner. Right. That's, two doable. <laughs> That's doable. One's a one skeiner, one's a two skeiner. Oh, two are one skeiners. The storm shawl, the Venezia. Um, That's like three days. Of, circle of friends. And um, I might and then a wrap. I might do another uh, get together so we'll see we'll see it just kicked off today September 1st so I I don't know we'll see it'll be fun um what else what else do we want to talk about what we're gonna knit next sure we haven't covered that <laughs> we're cute <laughs> oh you want to talk about your cute okay all right go ahead so somebody else has to talk about this because I don't understand it because I don't use my cue here. You want to tell Kim? All right. Yes. Yeah. So I just thought it would be fun to see how everybody uses Ravelry different, differently from each other. Um, some people are a little more serious about it 
Laura Hussey. Uh, <laughs> not at all. Uh, some people really, you know, stick with it. So I was going to see, just go to your projects page. If you don't, I know Laurieann, this is tough for you. And I just pulled up my projects and to see if it's, I use it. I follow your, it. your notebook and your cue. My, yeah, your cue. Yeah. And so I have on my no frill sweater. It's my first terrazzo sweater, the rug. And I've had this sweater, the green on there since you guys have known me, <laughs> which is forever. And then hanging leaves. Those are mine. I do use the cue. I put the yarn that I'm going to use in it. I then delete it after and don't get me wrong. There are other things in this queue, but I was, you know, just going for your top five. Um, so just, I just thought it would be interesting to see what was in each of your queues. So. All right, I'll go next. Okay. Sorry, Kate, did I jump in front of you? Sorry. So it's interesting because I'm terrible about posting on Ravelry and um, I use it all the time but I'm really bad about posting and I'm much better about just posting stuff on Instagram. And even that have been a little bit bad. I'm not a social media girl, but, um, so when you said that right when we started, she said, let's do that. Let's flash your cue. I looked at mine and it's interesting because I could go months and months and months without looking at it. And then it's interesting to go back to it. But right now, number one is the Veer Volt, um, shawl by Spastri Co, which is cast on and I'm struggling sort of getting back to it. Second is Spring Thing, which I'm almost finished with. My third is the Scofidia, which I've swatched for and can't wait to start. Four is Tensile, which is another um, beautiful Brooklyn Tweed pattern by Emily Green that I've wanted to make for a long time. And I ordered the yarn uh, early from, um, I did like a support your local yarn store during quarantine and bought both, both loft yarns. And then I'm, I'm long on um, Brooklyn Tweed. Um, there's number five has been in my stash, probably like you, Kim, forever. And it's a Breton sweater by Jared Flood. It's one of the original um, Brooklyn Tweeds. And I'm not using Loft. Um, I've had this yarn in my stash for a long time. I don't know why I don't get to it but I'm gonna use fiber company canopy fingering in a, it's a, the main pattern is white with very thin blue stripes and I'm doing blue navy with very thin white stripes. And just pulling it up made me think, God, when am I gonna to get to that? I love that sweater. Um, so, so I'm not too far off. Good. All right, Kate, what's in your queue? Um, so I do use my cue and I think I use it um, very similarly to how Kim does and I put things in there that are really like keep coming up like yes I want to make that yes I want to make that and also things that I bought yarn for that I haven't knit yet I also add those in there <laughs> so right now number one in my queue is old school by Vera Velmaki and that is the one that I'm going to knit in the cashmere people yarn that I bought mm -hmm. in the evergreen, I believe it's evergreen color. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is the Scarborough shrug, which I just talked about that I'm going to knit in the flower hill fleece. <laughs> As Kim blows away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, number three is Amaretto. It's a hat by Thea Coleman. Uh, it's a cabled hat, and she's been showing it a lot on her Instagram, um, and it worked. I, I did it. It's in my queue. <laughs> and number four is also a hat. It's called Monument. It's by Luke Gilligan. And I actually won the yarn to make this hat um, in a giveaway uh, on Instagram that he had done a while ago. But the hat is brioche, and I still, um, I've never knit anything in brioche, so that's on the back burner, but I have the yarn for it. So it's in my queue. <laughs> and then number five, am I on number five? Um, is Grey Ghost. Uh, it's also by Thea Coleman. Uh, it's one of her newer patterns and it's a, a sport weight. It was really, really pretty. So those are my five, my top five. All right. Now, Lorian, tell us about your unqueue. <laughs> I have 520 you know, patterns or whatever in my queue. So I lost track of using it a very long time ago. 
Do you um, kind of use it as like your favorites? Like, is that where you put things like, oh, I might want to knit that? I don't really use either of them. If okay. I have a favorite, so if I have a favorite project, I'm going to knit the Northeasterly blanket. I know that. Okay, right. Probably after my square a day. Okay. Uh, and I, I ordered yarn. I've been shopping and I've been winning. So I won, I won another, I don't know what it looks like, but I won something recently for next time. Um, and my taste have changed. When I first started knitting, I did a lot of lace and I did a lot of lace shawls. One thing I will do is if a pattern is free and I think I might knit it someday, I'll download the pattern and I'll stick it in my queue. I have a lot of that. So, and there's stuff in here I think is beautiful. I'm never going to make this. Let me show you and show you why. So number one in my queue is this. Okay. It's, I, what's it called? It's called More Pie by Andy Fagan. I want to say it's a uh, mosaic. It's a mosaic. I don't knit circular shawls anymore. That is a, that's a rug. That is, <laughs> no, I don't, I just don't. I, I, I fold them in the half and I wear them as a, as a half, half circle. So I don't, I just don't, I don't do that anymore. Um, next is, oh, this has been in here forever. And I sold the yarn that I was going to knit it with because I was taking forever. This is called the Elysium. It's a very detailed, oh, I can't even see it. Um, let me get a better, it's a super, super lacy. Can you see that? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, that is by Janelle Laidman. Here's another. Wendell Holmes, another lace shawl. Probably, I mean, I need these as gifts sometimes when I need a gift. Emanuela, another lace shawl. So this is why, and then this one is called Splatter Dashette. Splatter Dashette. It's pretty. Yeah, it is pretty, but no, no. Most of what I have in here, I'm not, I probably... I'm now not gonna make I when I have nothing else to do and I want to clean out my queue I'd rather be knitting so I don't clean out my queue um that's my fine but you said your queue is <laughs> yeah, it is because I I kind of I'd rather be sort of Im impulsive and knit what I I follow through on what I plan to knit but mm -hmm. I'd rather knit what I feel like knitting at that time so mm -hmm. um I think I think that's that's why I really don't. So I was just going to say I use my favorites a lot mm -hmm. and I actually do like to occasionally go back and look because sometimes I start to notice themes about what I am adding and what I want to knit and it helps me and other times uh, like because if I see something I'll just put it in a favorites file if I think I like it. And I might go back and be like, yeah, no, I like that, but that's not for me and delete it. And I, it's, me too. it does help me figure out what I really do want in it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to sit with so, it. Yeah. And it sounds so ridiculous, but how many times have I thought, oh, I love that. And then just like, it, it's not the right thing for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can be so fooled by how it looks on the, the model or the color it's, it is or whatever. And then you're like, yeah, no, that's just really not going to work for me. Either it's not going to work for my body type or it's not something that I'm going to actually wear. And it sounds so silly, but it really does help me. Um, well, no, like Lauren said, your taste changed too. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Like that first one, the pie shawl. Like I would knit that as a blanket. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing yeah. looking, right? I yeah, think it's beautiful. just stunning as a blanket. Super cool. It's huge. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's enormous. Be a great uh, baby blanket, like crib blanket, or that better be a special baby getting all that. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Your grandchildren someday. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Okay. So. I mean, someday. Yeah. That's right. My kids are 18 and and 15. But yeah. <laughs> and someday, um, I'm not saying yeah. So. Yeah. You'll still be knitting. Probably. So, so I, I, what I, what I, back to favorites, I will, if I am going to knit a pattern and then I see a project in it that I find helpful or I like, then I will favorite that project. Me too. Me too. So, or. Especially if it's in a different yarn than what the original pattern called for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or use the helpful. Uh, did you find this helpful? And you click yes. And then I'll filter projects out through that or whatever you know that filter 
so that I can easily go back and access it. Like my Northeasterly, uh, there's a project that inspired me. Um, it's not going to be identical, but it's going to be kind of, it's going to be inspired by. So that one I keep looking back at, but that's in my queue for like January, right? Um, cause I'm, I just thought you know, it would be interesting. You know, it's interesting to see how everybody uses it yeah. and uh, whether they do or not. Yeah, but. it is interesting. But I also know that I have patterns in my queue that I've already knit and I own in my library that I just haven't, haven't cleaned yeah. out. Well, yeah. it sounds like it's a beast that needs to be tamed. <laughs> yeah, well, ask me about my email inboxes, right? Ooh, oh, see, I, I'm a deleter. <laughs> I get rid of everything. I love to clean house. Yeah, so yeah. I try to file, but no, it's... No, nope, not going to happen. So, anyway. yeah. Right. Right. What else? Well, I do. We, yeah, um, we're enjoying everybody's comments. So please um, let us know what you're knitting. Let us know if you're knitting a Rhinebeck sweater um, and what it is. Uh, and because that's that's kind of coming up if it's September, right? It would have been in mid October. <laughs> I'm um, really going to miss and, that. Yeah. yeah. Miss a lot of things. And mm -hmm. our potiversary is, is it the 14th? I think it's the I think 14th. it is. I think so. What yeah. the heck? Where did that year go? I, 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 I can't speak for the rest of you, but I just sort of did this on a lark. Like you were like, let's do it. And I'm like, all right, who cares? Let's try it. And my mom's going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> we literally were like, well, maybe 10 people will watch it. Maybe, you know, whatever. Like it's the weirdest thing to me personally to put something out like this. Um, and it is, really, really nice to read the comments. It makes me happy. I'm like, oh, I haven't checked in a couple of days. I got to see what anyone says. And as my son points out, YouTube apparently is famous for nasty comments, you know, oh. in, on certain things. He's like, but you probably don't get that. And I go, no, we really don't. I mean, you know, maybe not every comment is like, oh my God, I love you guys. But really, like if you're watching this, you're a knitter and you're one of us. And you know, I, I just, don't know too many nasty knitters though. So exactly, <laughs> and and if you were, you wouldn't be watching podcasts and making mean comments. You know, uh, we don't pretend to be perfect, and you know, our our audiovisual equipment is Zoom, and you know, whatever. We're we're just throwing it out there. But I'm amazed that we're still Me doing too. It. I'm amazed and still enjoying it and having Thanks. fun. And I love 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 to read the comments. And Me too. You see that you know people enjoy it and it's fun it's been it's, fun it's been really fun yeah really fun I can't we're so it. grateful to all of you for tuning um, in yeah on that note we'll Thank tune you. out <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. thanks for watching yes. Yes. thank you stay thank well you. Stay. keep knitting bye, -bye. bye.